Mary Ann Giddens has gone from being a false prophetess to now speaking to the dead. Exposed. Carrie Ann is now back from the burial of her father and is excited about sharing her experience she had with her dead father. The name of Carrie Ann's video is called I Am Back. Thanks for prayers. This is what my dad told me. After the burial of her father, Carrie Ann said, her whole family were all waiting in line to hear from her dead father, to see him in a dream in their sleep. So Carrie Ann's family was pretty much conjuring up the spirit of her dead father, wishing and waiting, wanting to see him. I want to give a quick a vision because those of you who know this channel know that this channel is about visions and dream that is my gift the gift of prophecy through visions and dreams and i knew that when my father passed away <laughs> it wouldn't take a very long time for me to see him in the realm of the spirit because that's how it's work because you know if i'm always in the realm of the spirit absolutely i'm gonna see my dad right so i was waiting so this is really funny actually because when my dad passed away all the family were just we were just waiting in line to dream uh you know everybody wanted to dream my dad to dream them or their spirit to see my dad in 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 when they're asleep and everybody was waiting in line and we you know first they passed and we're like did you see, did we call him dad i and we're saying did, did you see that i and we're like no i haven't seen him yet then second day did you see that i no third and so forth and um i think it's my my brother that had the first the brother that had the first dream um in the you know about like well, I should say his son had the first dream about him and all of that. And then, uh, yeah, it was my turn to see that I. Carrie Ann says, I'm not going to lie. I was looking for my father in the realm of the spirit when he died. I went two days, three days. She said he came on the sixth day and she was excited. She was so happy. When the vision ended, I was so excited because, I was, yes, I'm not going to lie, I was looking for my father in the realm of the spirit when he died. And when two days, three days, four days passed, I didn't see my dad. I'm saying, you know, I'm in the spirit realm when I'm sleeping. Where is he? But when he came on the sixth day, I was so excited. I was so happy. Carrie Ann has opened herself up to a necromancy spirit. She is channeling, looking, searching for her dead father in the spirit realm. She misses her father so much that she is willing to rebel against God's word, seeking answers from the dead. Carrie Ann said, when she saw her dead father in her dream, it was beautiful. How can something so rebellious and so demonic be beautiful? And then, uh, yeah, it was my turn to see that I. It was beautiful, brothers and sisters. Carrie Ann said, the dream started off with a phone call from her brother, letting her know that her father is back at home. She said it felt so real. Um, yeah, I saw my dad, I had a vision about my dad. And I thought that this vision was absolutely happening because it felt so real. Because in all the visions started, brothers and sisters, I had a phone call from my brother. And just in the natural realm, just in the natural, my brother would phone and say, Carrie, because he's in Jamaica. And he would phone, Carrie, ring me back now. It was exactly like that in the vision. 
and, and, and the vision started with my brother ringing, Carrie, ring me back now, you know, ring me now. So I said, yeah, I will. So in the vision, I rung my brother back. And when I rung him back, I heard this laughter. My mom, my sister, my, I've got three brothers in the house and my, and my two nephews. So when my brother was on the phone, um, I heard this laughter and chattering and everything. And my brother was saying, Carrie, guess what? You guess what? And I said, what's, what's happening? What's going on? This was in the vision. And he said, Dad, I is home. And I was like, don't be silly. Stop, stop messing about. And he said, no, 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 no. He's home. He's, he's literally in the living area, um, in the dining hall, rather. And I said, what do you mean he's home? He said, I'm just going to give you the phone and you speak to him. Brothers and sisters, my heart was beating fast. The reason why it was beating fast because I knew that my father was dead. At this point, Carrie Ann is being seduced by a familiar and lying spirit in her dream. These spirits are working with the spirit of necromancy to seduce her into complete submission. Necromancy is the practice of communicating with the dead. Do know the practice of necromancy is considered an abomination with the Most High. The Bible says, There should not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Carrie Ann, did you hear that? To seek the dead, to speak to the dead, to communicate with the dead is an abomination in the sight of the Most High. And this would include your dead father. Carrie Ann said when her dead father got on the phone, the first thing she said to him was, Dad, I, you are dead. Her dead father said, no, 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 I am not dead. That is what the hospital told you. Okay, at this point, Carrie Ann is literally being seduced by a lying spirit in her dream. So my brother handed the phone to my dad. And my dad came on the phone. And the thing with my dad is that when he's in a good mood, he calls me Kerr. You know, when he's happy and everything, he calls me Kerr. Hello, Kerr. So he came on the phone and he went, Hello, Kerr. And the first thing, the first thing I said to my father, I said, Uh, that I, you, you're dead. <laughs> Just like that. Because I knew he was dead, both in the natural and both in the spirit. So I said, you're, I said, that I, I said, you're dead. I said, you, I said, what, what are you doing here? I said, you're dead. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. Listen to this. I want you to listen carefully. My dad is a very express, expressive person. You know, very expressive person. He went and he started to say, no, in his expressive self. I can't do my dad's expression, but I'll just talk what he said. He basically said to me, and stress this, he said, no, 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 no. I am not dead. My dad went on to say, that is what the hospital told you, guys. They said, oh no, but you know, in, in, that's in Jamaican's term. But he said, that is what the hospital told all of you that I'm dead. Carrie Ann's father told her, I am not dead. 
You do not understand what has happened to me. Carrie Ann is listening to a lion spirit in her dream. And she believes the lie. But he said that is what the hospital told all of you that I'm dead. He said I'm not dead. He said I am not dead. He said the hospital does not understand what has happened to me. Carrie Ann listened to her dead father very intensely. And he tells her at the hospital they came and got him and took him to a place for three days. A safe place that was very beautiful. So when you came to the hospital, it wasn't me, it was my brother, but it said that when you all came to the hospital, he said, um, the hospital told you all that I'm dead. He said, no, no, no. He said, no, I'm not dead. He said, let me tell you what happened. He said, Kerry, I'm going to tell you exactly what happened to me in the hospital. So I said, okay, that I. And he said, when I was here in the hospital, he said, they came for me. And when they came for me, they said, I had to go. He said, they said, my time was up. And he said, I wanted to stay. He said, I wanted to stay, but I could not. He said, I was begging and I was asking, let me stay. And they said, no, your time is up. You've got to come with us now. And he said, Kerry, I had no choice. I had to go. That's what my dad was saying in this vision, brothers and sisters, was explaining to me what was happening in the hospital. And he said, I had to go. He said, Kerry, I had to go. I had no choice in the matter. He said, when he left the hospital, I think this is when he passed, when he passed away, when he, you know, fell asleep, died, sort of thing. Um, he said, when I left the hospital, he said, they took me to a place and they said to me, I need to stay there for three days. I couldn't leave, couldn't do anything. I had to stay at this place for three days. And I said to him, what's, what's this place? What's, what's this place like where, where you went for three days? And he laughed and he said, it's a beautiful place. It's all greenery. Actually, when, he, when, when my father said to me, it's a beautiful place, it's like my spirit saw this place and with all him said it was greenery and all this and all that i saw in this like i saw in the spirit as we were talking about this place exactly where he was and i knew he was safe i knew he made it in to heaven what carrie ann does not realize is she is not talking to her father but a familiar spirit a lion spirit demons in her dream. They are both there to open the door for the spirit of necromancy. Carrie Ann is communicating with her dead father. She is getting messages from him, chopping it up as if he is still walking this earth. She is happily conversating with the dead and is bold enough to go public with it. The Bible says, The dead praise not the Lord, nor do any that go down into silence. Carrie Ann, your dead father is doing a lot of talking and visiting for someone who is supposed to be in complete silence. The Bible says, for to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that he shall die, but the dead know not anything, neither have they any more a reward, no more worth, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also, their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything 
that is done under the sun. Carrie Ann, your father has no more worth forever in anything that is done under the sun. And when you dream and have your visions, this too is done under the sun. Carrie Ann, you're speaking to your dead father in your dream, him telling you he is back and standing right in the dining room area at your mother's house is an abomination. Your dead father saying he will never leave you, that he is always looking out for you and the family is an abomination. Being told by they he is free to go after the three days, so he comes home to look out for you and your family is an abomination. Your communication with your dead father is an abomination in the sight of the Most High. The Bible says, whatever your hand find to do, do it with all your might. For there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in the grave to which you are going. Carrie Ann, whatever your father did in this life, he did it before he left here. For there is no work or thought or knowledge or wisdom in the grave, and when given enough time, we all are going. The Bible says, where a tree falls, there shall it lie. Unless you're having a Lazarus situation going on, there is no coming back, not even in a dream or vision. And if they come back in any form, you're dealing with something else, demons. Carrie Ann says her father had to stay in this green, peaceful place for three days. Carrie Ann says she then knew that her father had made it into heaven. My question is, if the dead father made it into heaven, why is he now leaving out of heaven to go home to look after Carrie Ann and the family in Jamaica? This leaving out of heaven is just plain ridiculous. But then again, we are talking about Carrie Ann Gidden. If the rich man could not leave out of hell, no one is leaving out of heaven either, going home to watch over loved ones. Carrie Ann correlate this green three-day location to the three days that Yahshua was in hell, setting the captive free. She says it is a pattern. No, it is not. Carrie Ann has no Bible, no book, no verse about people when they die are taken away for three days into some green and peaceful place after death. But this does not stop Carrie Ann from sharing information, information that is totally exalted against the knowledge of the Most High. But more importantly, why is Carrie Ann totally carrying on a conversation with her dead father? Why is she engaged in getting information from the dead? She is getting information from the dead and she is sharing it with you. Eve shared her apple with Adam and it didn't turn out too good. Carrie Ann has a weakness, her father. 
So Satan tempts her with the necromancy spirit. She takes a big bite to get daddy back. People, the Bible says, if a person turns to mediums and necromancers whoring after them, I will set my face against that person and will cut him off from among his people. Beware of Carrie Ann. Many think because a dead loved one comes to them in a dream or vision and gives them information about whatever and the information comes to pass and actually help them. Many people feel that this encounter is of God. Let it be known that your conversation, your interaction with a dead loved one is an open door to the demonic. You two are entertaining a lying spirit opening you up to the spirit of necromancy. Even though Carrie Ann says it is forbidden to talk to the dead, yet she yields to the necromancy spirit. She communicates with the dead because he comes in the image of her dead father. And I knew he was safe. I knew he made it in to heaven. But he didn't say physical heaven because I think it's forbidden for them to come back, the dead, to come back and say, oh, I'm in heaven. I see Jesus. I saw the angel. Some people had vision. But I know, I think it's in the book of St. Matthew when the rich man went to, when the, when the rich man went to went to hell and he saw Lazarus and he said, Lazarus, go and tell my brothers, you know, to be good and to do this and not to come to hell. And I think, is it Lazarus or Abraham? One of the two. But they answered the rich man and said, no, you've got the prophets. You've got the prophets to teach the people. So we know it's kind of forbidden for people to foot. Not that they cannot come back and tell you where they are, but the 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 talking codes and my dad was talking in codes because he calls it a safe place. I'm at a safe place, you know. Carrie Ann says her dead father in the dream was talking in codes. Make that make sense. I keep referencing the father as dead father because he is dead and also to keep some grounded. Carrie Ann is a good talker. If I did not do this, many would look at Carrie Ann's father as possibly being alive somewhere, the way she speaks about him. Carrie Ann yields to this necromancy spirit because she has been bewitched. This lying spirit and the necromancy spirit are working together to seduce Carrie Ann. Seduce her into believing her dead father is very much alive and is there to protect and look out for her and her family. I know that Carrie Ann is still grieving over the loss of her father. I get that. But this is not how people of the Most High handle grief. I'm sorry, but the Most High says necromancy, speaking to the dead, is an abomination. Stop it, Carrie Ann. You're grossly out of line with the Most High. Carrie Ann said her father said after the three days were up, they told him he can go. He was free to go. So her dead father went back home to be with his family. Carrie Ann has completely lost it. Carrie Ann then asked her father if he would be staying at the house. Her dead father said, yes, I will always always be with you all. I will never leave you. I'm here forever. He said, I'm going to always be around you. I'm at a safe place, you know. So, um, 
So he said to me, yeah, he said, I have to stay. He said, after the three days was up, he said, once the three days was up, they said to me, you can go. He said, you're free. They said, I'm free. You can go. And he came straight home. So I said, are you going to go back to this place? I said, are you staying? I said, you're, are you home for good? No, he said, yeah. He said, I will always, always be with you all. He said, I will never leave. He said, I'm here forever. He said, I'm going to always be around you. Thank you, Lord. That's what my father said. And in the vision, as I was talking to my father, I could, I don't know, I could see everybody in the dining hall. I could see my sisters, my brother, I could see my mom. And my mom was like, because she calls him Brother T. And she was like, Brother T, you really home? And my dad was laughing and said, yeah. They said, I'm home. You know, I'm, I'm here for good. I'm going to be, I'm going to protect you guys. I'm going to look after you and everything like that. People, this is truly sad. Those who know how to pray, please pray for Carrie Ann. She is greatly deceived. Why is Carrie Ann sharing information that is 100% exalted against the knowledge of the Most High? The Bible says, Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Carrie Ann asked her mother about her father's clothing that she remembered him wearing in the dream. She wanted to know if her father had a light blue shirt and dark brown pants that he wore. Carrie Ann's mother confirms that the light blue shirt and dark brown pants were indeed his favorite clothing that he liked to wear. After speaking with her mother, Carrie Ann was flabbergasted that she was right about her father's clothing in the dream. Because her father lived in Jamaica and she in the UK, Therefore, she would have no knowledge of his clothing that he frequently wore. Carrie Ann has been seduced. She has been bewitched and therefore is unaware that a familiar spirit is working in her life. This familiar spirit is at work in her life and the life of her family in Jamaica. Carrie Ann is unaware that this demon, a familiar spirit, knows a lot about her father a thousand times more than herself. And to reveal to Carrie Ann what her father wore is just child's play for this demon. Yes, Carrie Ann. The demon of familiar spirits enlighten you on your father's clothing in your dream. Knowing you will confirm with your mom, it's no big thing. This is exactly what they do. Carrie Ann was perplexed about how her father knew that the hospital told her family that he was dead. She said, how did my father know that? Because he was not there. She just could not figure that out. The second thing I said to my mom after speaking the vision, I said, mommy, there's something that's puzzling me in this vision. And she said to me, what is it? What's wrong? I said, in the vision, my dad, when, I, when, when he came on the phone and said to me, and I said, you're dead. And he said, no, I'm not dead. You know, that's what the hospital told you. I said to my mom, I said, how did he know? How did Dada know that the hospital, because it's true, because it was the hospital who told us that he was dead. I said, how did he know that the hospital told us that he was dead? Because obviously by the time we reached the hospital well my brother reached the hospital he died probably an hour or half an hour or something like that before we reached so i said how did he know that 
How did he knew that the hospital told us he was dead? My mom laughed and she said, there's mysteries in the spirit that we don't understand. So even, even now I'm still, I'm still puzzled brothers and sisters about that bit. How did my father knew that the hospital told us he was dead? People, this is quite sad and quite tragic. Carrie Ann has 100% bitten into the lie of the enemy. She is now on a quest falling down a demonic rabbit hole trying to make sense of the words of a lying spirit that has seduced her wholly. Carrie Ann, demons hang out in groups. You give way to one and that one will open the door for others. The spirit of divination is holding the door for necromancy, witchcraft, sorcery, lion spirits, Jezebel spirits. A door is being held open for the demonic in your life because you refuse to obey God's word. Instead, you parade around promoting silly fables and doctrines of demons. People, what you're looking at is spiritual warfare. Satan contending for the souls of people. Using Carrie Ann Gidden to do his bidding. Carrie Ann, you're dealing with a lying spirit that have spun you a web of deception. You're like a fly caught in a trap spun by the enemy. Carrie Ann, your only escape is the simplicity of God's word and not your dreams and visions that are exalted against the knowledge of God's word. Carrie Ann says that after death, then comes the judgment. She says you're not going to wait for judgment day. You're going to know where you're going. Carrie Ann said, and that is what I believe happened to my dad. She said that is the reason why he went away for three days, because he had to get his judgment. People, do these words line up with the word of God? People. Where did Jesus ever say we must go away after death for three days to get our judgment? Afterwards, we are free to go back and take care and protect our loved ones who still remain on earth. Doctrines of Demons Carrie Ann then said, remember, Jesus went into the belly of the earth for three days, she says. So these are patterns. Her scripture reference to support her father's three-day judgment was when Jesus went to hell for three days to set the captive free. Make that make sense. Carrie Ann, the Bible says in the book of Revelations, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, which is the book of life. 
and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So Carrie Ann, I'm not sure of the judgment that your dead father had, but Revelations chapter 20 verses 11 through 14 is the one the Bible speaks of. I suggest you get to know it. Carrie Ann said her father died with the true gospel of Jesus Christ and because of this, she knows that he made it into the kingdom of God. I only hope that Carrie Ann's father did not share all of Carrie Ann's belief of the Bible because if he did, he is in big trouble. And now to Carrie Ann's subscribers. The Bible says, the prophets prophesy falsely and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. The Bible says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. You know, I marvel at how so many do not desire the truth of God's word. Most would rather hear lies and fables and sometimes just a pretty accent. Subscribers, you too will be judged with the false prophets and prophetesses for not receiving the truth of God's word. Don't forget that. Carrie Ann made the proud announcement that her dead father came to her in a second dream. She says the second dream is more powerful than the first one she received from her dead father. She says soon she will share the second dream with you all, words from the dead. Obviously, Carrie Ann wants you guys to get on board with hearing from the dead too. Abomination. Carrie Ann is having full dialogue, full conversation, communicating with her dead father. She is listening, receiving, believing, and is looking forward to more conversations with the dead. People, Carrie Ann is committing an abomination in the sight of the Most High. She herself says it is forbidden, yet she gives herself a special pass because it is her dad. Sadly to say, Carrie Ann is not speaking to her father, but to a familiar spirit, a lying spirit, a necromancy spirit that is there to steal, kill, and destroy her. Carrie Ann, I spoke to you in my last video called, Carrie Ann, judgment is coming for you. Judgment is coming for you because of your rebellion against the Most High's word. Carrie Ann, like you said, repent openly before all. The Most High loves you, but he also corrects those whom he loves. Carrie Ann getting judgment is coming for you. All right. Don't let Carrie Ann get in. 
lead you down the same demonic rabbit hole she is held captive in. Yeshua loves you. Be blessed.